Okay, it's 5.44 in the morning. This field is ready to harvest, and I know it doesn't look like it, but the grass is long enough that we can cut it. It doesn't have the little yellow tops, but it's ready. So we're going to drive back up and grab a tractor and uh, come on down here and cut the lawn. So we'll go ahead through that process. Super exciting. Yeehaw. And there's all of our canola. It's almost grown. So we're going to be doing some harvesting this morning on the interim. But uh, we're going to need one of the big tractors at least. So I think we should be getting away. The nice thing about doing the fields like that that are close to the biogas is you really only need one tractor. So, All right, so we're going to grab this guy. Once again, if you're going to do the mowing like I do it where you have you mow a whole field and you want to get a nice big swath, you're going to need these big, at least a minimum of these 320 horsepower tractors because the tractors, the front mower requires 90 horsepower. That rear double mower requires uh, 190 horsepower for a grand total of 280 horsepower. This is the only tractor that is, or the first tractor in price-wise that reaches that goal or that number. Hold on. Sorry about that. I got a phone call. So we're going to go ahead and hook up. Yeah, we're going to grab this guy here. And we're going to run down to the end of the field here and start mowing. Now, I just do what I need to do. I don't really have to go, I don't go overboard and try to mow everything because that would take too long. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and fold these bad boys out while we're driving. Alright, so to operate all three mowers at the same time, you have to do a little finagling. You don't have to get too close up to this cliff because you're going to have to have a turnaround point. So the first thing you do is you get to the front mower, you turn it on and lower it. And then you go to the back mowers, you turn them on, and you lower them. Now, I use the cruise control. I just press number three. The tractor will max out at 13 miles per hour. And off we mow. It's that simple. So I'm going to go ahead and get this field done. And I'll come back, and we'll, we'll join up in a little bit. And there is, there are more one, there's more than one way to skin a cat. If you can't stand the mowing, or you don't want to spend the money on the big tractor, uh, there's another way to harvest silage uh, or the stuff to make silage I'm going to show you so yeah you'll see all right so see you in a couple minutes I know it takes a long time to do this I've been running for about four or five minutes now probably take about 20 minutes total to eh, maybe 15 minutes to mow both fields but you got to keep telling yourself six hundred thousand dollars six hundred thousand dollars six hundred thousand dollars <laughs> Because that's about what you're going to make when you're done doing this. So, Once again, it doesn't have to be fancy. You're going to obviously miss some spots. You don't have to be perfect. If you want to be perfect with it, you can. But you don't have to be. So, Just get it mowed as much as possible. Alright, we're almost finished mowing here. Getting real close. Seth has changed all my settings. Seth was kind enough to mow the field for me, weren't you, Seth? Seth will be right back after this commercial interruption. All right, so we're going to finish up this here. Seth did a pretty good job mowing. He did leave a couple spots, but once again, it doesn't have to be perfect because really you're going to collect most of it. Little bits aren't going to make a huge difference in the yield. So I'm going to turn all these off and lift them. I do clean my mowers probably every third or fourth mow. They start getting pretty dirty, and I take them up and clean them up. But they're pretty clean today, so we'll just leave them as is. Wind rower, same thing. It gets cleaned every couple mows. So let's go ahead and dump the, f the wings off. Oops. Back. Seth is back. How do you know? I'll show you how to wind row. Whoops, wrong one. And we're going to dump this off. Yep. Chris isn't done with this. Seth, you're going to be wind rowing. What are you worried about? All right, so we're going to hook the hook it up. And uh, 
gonna slow down time a little bit too, because I'm. Alright. Whoa! Got hooked on the fence. There we go. Not good at all. Not good. All right, so I'm going to pull in here. We're going to unfold the windrower. Takes a little while. This windrower can cover about five rows, maybe a little more. There we go. Seth, you need to come watch, bud. All right, so we're going to turn the windrower on, V and B, same as the mower. Mm -hmm. Yep, when we get to the end, we're going to lift it because it gets tangled otherwise. So we're going to press the V key to lift it. So we're just going to go through here, and we're, as you can see, it takes all these swaths and makes one nice swath for the uh, the grass picker-upper to pick up. Um, we're going to miss some spots, but Seth's going to run this one, so I'm going to do a couple rows for for him so he can see how to do it, and then he's going to take over. Nah, you don't. You're going to get tangled. Now, with the wind roar, you really got to watch where you end, because you're going to end up getting tangled in the trees, and you'll get tangled in the bumps and rocks and stuff, so you got to be real careful. Pretty much just take it to the end of the row. Okay, Seth. And then you lift it. When you get to the end, you lift the rowers. Yes. You can make grass bales. You can make bales out of anything that leaves a trail on the ground like this. So, But there's really no point because there's, you know, like I showed you before, the grass, unless you have cows, you don't really need any of those bales. So... And you can use silage to feed them too, so you, I don't know. I, right, exactly. So we'll put the, the blades back down. And we're going to go ahead and, and... See, I missed a little spot there. Not a big deal. It'll, it'll get caught next time. Mow. Every, mow every day. I mow every morning, so... I just think, just imagine this. This field, every morning, is going to yield between five and $600,000. Just or five hundred and six hundred thousand dollars. Sorry, uh, and that's once again we're playing on easy. If you play on the harder modes, it's definitely not nearly. It's probably maybe fifteen hundred dollars a thing. So you're looking at more like two to three hundred thousand. But it's really, I think even on the hard one, it's probably worth getting into right away. I'm gonna make a new series here soon called Grapes of Wrath, and we're gonna play on hard mode uh, and see how see how. Yeah, it's a famous old movie. Now in a tight spot like this, I've gotten the wind rower as far as it's gonna go. And I'm going to need to fold it to get it out. So you probably won't have to do this, Seth. But you press the X key and it'll fold the wind rower up. And then we'll just back it into the next position. Yeah, it's an old movie about uh, the difficulties or hard life, the hard life of farming during the Dust Bowl back in the, the 1920s. My understanding is that here in America, we over-harvested the plains. They didn't have any kind of field management. So they just harvested, planted, harvested, planted, and they kept doing it. And it ended up killing the soil, and then the plants could no longer grow. And and everything died off. It became what they called a giant dust bowl. There was just dust blowing across the plains because there was no vegetation. It all died. So it, it killed, our, killed our economy. It was part of the whole Great Depression. It was a terrible thing that happened. So, yeah, there's a movie about it called, well, a book about it called The Grapes of Wrath that became a famous movie in the, I think, the 30s. So, all right, Seth. So Seth's going to take over windrowing. He's going to get both these fields windrowed, and we'll go to the pickup stage. Okay, so we have finished windrowing. You'll see there are some spots that you're not going to get, and that's just how it is, especially if there's bumps in the field, because the bumps make the windrowers pop up, and then they don't pick up. So, lots of, I got kind of a bumpy field here, I guess. But uh, we're going to pick up this pickup. We're going to pick up the pickup trailer, and I'm going to start picking up, and and um, then we'll start dropping this stuff off at the at the mills or at the biogas plant, so you can see how it works. And we're going to park the wind rower right here. We're going to pick this guy up. Just like so. And we're going to run down. Actually, we'll start on this end because it's closer. So what I'm going to do is um, show you how to do this. So you're going to you're going to pull right here where the line is. 
we're going to lower the pickup and we're going to turn the wagon on. And you can see here, we're going to start sucking up grass. And you'll see it appear. So you just go around the whole field and suck up your rows. Now, this trailer is going to fill up two or three times, probably three times, before I'm completely done with this field. And you can see there, because that section is bumpy, I still didn't even get all that grass. So now the hard thing is these trailers are very stiff-necked. They don't turn really easily. So it does take a couple trips to get everything. So let's see if it picks up going this way. Yeah, it did. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up the field, and I will see you at the end. All right, so I have the last load of silage, or of grass, going down to the silo, the silage pen. And I'll show you how to blanket it up. This, there were three trailers. This is the third trailer, and I still have a little bit of grass left up here. So three trailer loads, like I said, is about 150,000 units, whatever that is. Yeah, it actually is exactly 150, because... This trailer carries 50,000, so three loads is 100. So two fields gives you, those two fields give you that much. That's a lot. Now you can see here on the right, this is one that's done and ready. That's what the silage looks like when it's finished. This is what it looks like when it's not. So what you do is you dump. I try to run back and forth. You can see it's compacted. I've been running back and forth over it. And can you imagine this is 150, three trailer loads of this is only 15 or 25% full. So you can make this silo even fuller if you want. But I figure, you know, you might as well each day, since you're putting this much in every day, you might as well just um, fill a new one each day and then empty the old one. So there you go. So now we're, we've got it 100% compacted. You can see up there on the left-hand side, we have the option to blanket the silo. So I'm going to go ahead and pull mostly off. And I'm going to blanket it up. There it is. There's the blanket. So that is in there and it's fermenting. And it takes about 15 hours to ferment. And then you're going to run over. Once it's fermented, this is the end product. And you're going to grab your bucket loader or your little tractor or whatever you decide to go with. And uh, you're going to do this. I'll show you how to do this. This tractor is nice, as you've seen on my map back in the States. This bucket holds about, eh, well, you'll see. It holds 6,400 total. So you may have to play around with it a little bit to get it to grab all of it. There we go. Time to eat. Get the ketchup, side. Get the ketchup. All right, so we're going to dump this bucket load in. Oops, I'm driving like a monkey. And this one's actually, it seems like because of the camera, it's easier to drive from inside. So you line up with this, put the bucket right up against there, and then you're going to dump it out. And you're going to run a run time at a little bit faster than normal because you can see, see how long it takes to empty that out? By the time you get the next bucket load, you're still going to be unloading. And eventually that thing holds up to 20,000, but when you reach 20,000, it's full. So, and there's 150,000 here. So if you run time at five minutes instead of one minute you'll actually fill it up um, you'll be able to continually do it without having to f stop whoops I got my, my buttons are screwed up <laughs> kids there we go we'll do one more bucket scoop and then we're going to wait Controls are all messed up. And that's it. So as you can see there, I just made almost $50,000 from two scoops of that stuff. And I've still got almost a full, no, not full, but I've still got maybe like 20, 30 more scoops to go. So we're going to have about 600000 when we're done. I'll check in with you once it's finished and we'll go over what the final amount is. But it's just ridiculous how much money you make doing this. One bug that I wanted to point out, this truck see where the gray joins the yellow down at the base where the shovel joins that becomes disconnected over time and the shovel will get crooked um, I think you already saw it happen in my 
home series where I was doing this, but that just happened to this truck now, and I had to drive drive it back. So I had to, um, whoa, <laughs> real physics there. I had to drive it to the, um, I had to reset it to my farm to get it fixed. So anyway, that happens with this thing. I think this is pushing the, don't tell Sven I did this. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know what's going to happen. I have to run it with the tailgate closed. <gasps> no, that's yeah. Don't open that. <laughs> this is ridiculous, but it saves me a trip. <laughs> All right, we'll pick up in a little bit. As you can see, I, I paid off a hundred fifty thousand dollar loan. We'll we'll reinitiate the loan and then pay it back immediately, so you can see exactly how much money I made. But I've already made strict profit, pretty much a hundred forty thousand credits. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> all right. See you in a couple minutes. This is not looking safe, and I'm about to to uh, stall out. <laughs> I don't know. He looks like he's gonna make it. <laughs> we'll see. Well, he's made it so far. Shift. It's not looking so safe though, but. I'm just going to drop this tractor up here anyway because I've got to um, <laughs> drop the trailer off or the uh, collector off. Look at that dirt detail. Time to clean the tractor, huh? And success. Not exactly the safest way to do it, but we did it. <laughs> All right. See you in a couple minutes. All right, tractor cleaned and delivered. So Sven will be happy. We put his tool back and... We are going to see, let's see here. Is that crop ready yet? I'm also harvesting at the same time. Yep, that one's ready. So I'm going to park this guy and get back to harvesting and doing the, uh, doing our scooping. So I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, here's another problem. This I wanted to point this out. This is a bug with this heavy loader, and it's almost getting to the point where I can't even use it because I keep having to take it back to the garage. So what happens, you can see here the bucket gets crooked, and then even if I take it off and put it back on, this remains an issue. So I have to reset this whole thing to my garage and then go back, bring it back down here, and freaking start over again, and you get like three or four dumps, and it starts to do this. I don't know why it does this. In my other game, I don't have this problem, the American one, but for whatever reason here on Bjornholm, this tractor has been having all kinds of problems with that loader, and what happens is you can see the arm is actually torqued. And this whole thing comes disconnected from... See that? It's shearing off there, and I, I don't know how to fix that. I wish... I wish there was a control or something that would make it twist. I don't know. I don't know if there's a... Yeah, see, there's no mouse action that does it. It's just, it's just how it is. So this makes this almost useless because it's almost better to use the smaller loader because I keep having to reset this thing to my garage, and that sucks. Let's find it here, and I'll show you what I mean. Oh, for crying out loud, where is it? There it is. <laughs> this takes forever. Okay, so here it is. And as you can see here, now it's fixed. But after maybe three or four more dumps, it's going to be broken again. So I, every time I have to come back up here and get it and then bring it all the way back down to the silo or to the uh, bio farm and then put the bucket back on and finish, you know, do two or three more bucketfuls and then it'll break again. It's just this is getting old. And it sucks because, you know, this thing's expensive. It's almost 200000 with the bucket. And it's now becoming almost worthless to me because I keep having to do this. So, whoops, nice driving. For whatever reason, it doesn't do this on the American one. But I should rephrase that. I've had it do it once on the American one. But for whatever reason here on Bjornholm, it happens all the time. It just continually happens. So, 
something to keep your eyes open for on this model. Hopefully they'll fix that in a, in a patch, but that is really irritating. I guess the biggest trick is that you just got to be really careful with the bucket to make sure that it's not catching on the sides of those uh, collectors because that's what's really doing it in. The collector is pretty much is pretty much hooking onto it and sucking the tractor and whenever it does that it kind of bends those forks so if i can be more careful maybe that'll help not uh, have that issue happen but it's really irritating when it happens i'll keep my eyes on it and let people know i have a feeling what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna save up a whole bunch of money on bjorn home and we'll keep the log going on my initial farm but uh we'll use bjorn bjork home as uh our testing ground for equipment because I have so much money already here especially after this throw that I can buy pretty much anything so we can get all kinds of equipment out and test it now you see what I did with the bucket there where it dragged the tractor forward I think that's what's causing the problem because it seems like right after that happens then the bucket starts getting crooked so I just will have to be super super careful not to do that so All right, so I had $100,000 to start with, but I paid $150,000 loan. So if we do the math, basically we're at a $50,000 surplus. So what that means is, um, there we go. So that's the full thing. Let's go see what the last load costs. So with that loan paid off, it kind of evened things out for me. So really... Like I, pre I predicted, five to six hundred thousand. Okay, so here's the last load. You just gotta be real careful. Once again, I'm gonna try not to catch the, the bucket. There it goes. It caught the bucket. But what can you do? All right. So the grand total, we're gonna add fifty thousand to this. So actually, we'll do it this way. We'll actually really do it so you can see it, and then I'll just pay it right back. Hang on a second here. So I made just about five hundred eighteen thousand dollars with one hundred and fifty units. And that's today's price. Now imagine when they double it, when there's a demand. And so I'm going to keep one of the silos just full. And then I'll continue to, you know. But when the, when you get a demand for it, you actually double the amount of money you make. So that can be up to a hundred, a million uh, credits or a million dollars. So, so we make about half a million dollars every time we do, daily basically. Every time you mow the lawn and fill one of these up halfway, you're going to make half a million dollars.